This is the new Z Flip 4. It's an adorable little phone, but on the inside, there's nothing special by default. So here are the first 16 things I would do to get it from looking like this to looking like this, which is much more aesthetic, but also makes this tall screen more ergonomical and functional. And most of these things are applicable to all Samsung phones. There's a multitasking setting that's super useful, but it's actually pretty hidden. So under settings and then advanced features and then labs, you can toggle on the swipe for pop-up view and split screen. And after that, now you can just use two fingers to swipe up from the bottom to get to split screen and also swipe down from the top corner to get to the pop-up view. This is much easier and quicker than before. And this pop-up view is like a way to do picture in picture, even when the app won't do it. So for example, with the YouTube app, without premium, I can't do picture in picture, but now if I'm playing music or just watching a video, I can very quickly put it into the pop-up view, which can look very similar to the picture in picture. So yeah, kind of a life hack. And of course the split screen is great too. Sometimes I like to watch YouTube while scrolling through Reddit. And since this is a taller phone, the split screen configuration is more spacious than usual. So I think it's especially nice. But also you can save the split screen configuration to either your home screen or the edge panel. And I think this edge panel is very nice and handy because no matter where you are in the phone, no matter what app you're in, you can access it. By default, you can put a bunch of apps there and you can edit the apps by clicking the hamburger icon and then edit. But also if you click on the settings, you can add even more options. So here are all the ones that you've got. I really like the weather and the clipboard, but also the smart select. I find it pretty useful for taking screenshots. But if you go into the Galaxy store, there's even more options. I tried some of these out, but I would say my favorite one is the control center. It's pretty funny because it looks exactly how it looks in iOS but not gonna lie, it is pretty useful. I mean, it's nice to be able to control my music here and also control the brightness and volume without having to reach the top of my phone. Overall, this thing works very well. The only thing is the brightness sliders don't actually slide. You kind of just have to tap on it. And you can also reorder these panels just by clicking here. I put the control center first and I can get to the other things just by swiping. And the next thing that I do is adjust some display settings. I changed the screen zoom to the second lowest because this way it will display more content on the screen at once. So there's less scrolling for me to do no matter what I'm looking at, which is pretty nice. Also something that I have to do is change the screen timeout to the maximum 10 minutes. There's also the extra brightness toggle here. Typically when you're outside, the screen should automatically go to the maximum brightness that it will go, but turning this on lets you do it manually. Sometimes when the auto brightness isn't bright enough, it's nice to be able to overwrite that and force the max brightness manually. But there's also an extra dim setting and you can add it into the quick settings panel. I'm going to add it into the very front here so that when I swipe down, it immediately shows up and I don't have to pull down once again. I also just reorganize the rest of the settings, move the ones that I use more towards the front so that it's easier to access. But yeah, the extra dim is pretty nice, especially at night because it lets you go even dimmer than the minimum brightness but it does affect colors a little bit. Okay, and the next thing, and this is another must do for me, is to change the navigation buttons into swipe gestures. I think the swipe gestures are much better for navigating the phone because with buttons, whenever I want to go back, I have to tap the back button, which is this one down here. But with swipe gestures, I can just swipe from anywhere on either side of the screen to go back. And I think that's much quicker to do. In general, I feel like swipe gestures are just far more convenient and intuitive. And also the buttons do take up extra space at the bottom of the screen. So yeah, I definitely recommend giving swipe gestures a try. One UI also has a pretty good one hand mode, but again, it's pretty hidden. So it's under advanced features and here you can toggle on the one handed mode. This phone is not very wide, so it's pretty nice to use it with just one hand, but it is pretty long. So it's difficult to reach the top when I'm just holding the phone like this. And the one hand mode is very helpful. I like the way Samsung does the one hand because you can still see the entire screen, unlike on iOS or stock Android where it's only half the screen. Okay, so those were some things to make this phone more functional. And now let's do some more aesthetic customizations. A super quick and easy way to completely transform the look of the phone is to just find a theme from the Galaxy Store and apply it. 
I like doing this because I want my phone to look cute and aesthetic, but I also don't want to spend that much time customizing it. And after applying a theme, everything on the phone is super cohesive and cute. The home screen, the lock screen, the cover screen, always on display, the app icons, colors, and even some of the app interfaces are all changed and it just looks so nice. But if you don't really want to apply a theme and I get it because it does affect a lot, another way to quickly customize is to just apply a wallpaper and then let the color palette match the wallpaper. You can also toggle on the apply to app icons. And this way, everything also becomes nice and cohesive. This phone not only has the main screen, but it also has the cover screen. And you can change the cover screen clock face by going into the settings. There's a bunch of options here, but you can also set your own photo, video, or GIF as the cover screen background. I think that's really cool and fun. Every time you tap on the cover screen, the video or GIF will start playing. And if you swipe towards the right on the cover screen, you'll see your notifications. But if you don't want them there, you can turn it off in the settings. And if you swipe towards the left, you'll see all of your widgets. There's a good amount by default. My favorite ones are the music player, the weather, and also the calendar. These are all the options and you can reorder them as well. But a cool one that I found is this cover launcher widget from Goodlock Multistar. And Goodlock is made by Samsung. So this thing lets me run any five apps on my phone directly on the cover screen. Some apps do scale better on this tiny little screen than others. The YouTube one actually scales quite well. I can scroll around and watch videos here. Another good one is the messages one, but do note that you can't type here. So the usefulness of this thing is still pretty limited. And for the home screen. So the first thing that I like to do is to change up the grid size. Right now, I like using the four by six configuration. There are also two customizations that you may find very helpful in the home up app in good luck. So the first one is under the task changer. And here you can change the layout type of your recently opened apps. These are all the options. And the one that I went for is the slim list. When I'm shuffling around in my recently opened apps list, I don't really need to see the entire app. I just need to see the app name. And this slim list shows me all the app names in the most concise way, which is why I find it more useful over the default. And the second one is under the home screen. And here you can change the apps page to be a scrolling list. So just like how it is on stock Android instead of several pages. You can also toggle on the hide app icon label for a cleaner look. I would love to do this, but after trying it out, I legitimately forget what some apps are. Of course, phone cases are a great way to protect and customize your phone. I have some Z Flip 4 cases to unbox thanks to Casetify, today's video sponsor. All of these cases come in 100% recyclable packaging. The impact cases are made with 65% recycled and plant-based materials. All of your favorite Casetify cases are available for the Z Flip 4. There's many cool designs, so you can pick your favorite color and print for your case to match with your phone and style. There's new colors as well. Aside from the clear, there's also haze purple, baby blue, and kiwi. You can even customize a case with your own monogram or name, and the cases also support wireless charging. These cases are powered by EcoShock and are fine-tuned for optimal protection, with up to five feet drop test protection when the Z Flip 4 is opened. The sides are flexible and the backplate is hard. They also have a raised bezel for extra screen protection and surpass military standards. Casetify has released new cases for the Z Flip 4. You can go to casetify.com slash created by Ella today to get 15% off on your new phone case. And of course, I'm also going to add some widgets to my home screen. One widget that I really like is called Pix Material U Light Dark. It provides these like pixely looking widgets. I really like the look of them, especially these clocks and also the Google search bar too. And other than that, I just add some of the ones that are here by default. I really like the Samsung calendar list because Samsung calendar can sync with Google calendar and that's what I use. And also this list can scroll too. The Spotify one is great too 
too. You can play or pause the music and also skip tracks. The Gmail widget is pretty looking. It matches the color palette of the phone and the default weather one is pretty nice too. And you can also create a widget stack to save space or to hide a widget that you don't want to see all the time. For me, I don't want to see my calendar all the time. So I put it in a stack with the weather and that way most of the time it's covered up and I'll swipe to it when I want to see it. And something that I want to point out is the side key. This is under settings and then advanced features. By default, the double press will quick launch the camera, but you can change it to pay with Samsung Pay or open up any other app. But especially for the Z Flip, I think it will be best to leave it on the quick launch camera because only then will you be able to activate the camera directly on the cover screen without even having to unlock the phone. Being able to see a camera preview on the cover screen is definitely a perk of this flip phone. On the cover screen, you can change between photo, portrait, or video. You can also change between the lenses, so the main lens or the ultra wide. To take a photo, you can just click on the volume button, but there's also palm detection. So whenever it sees a palm, it will just take a picture automatically. Now for the keyboard, I have two recommendations. The first one is Gboard, and this is what I used to always use. It has better predictive typing, you can also set a theme for it, including setting one of your own photos as a background. But the default keyboard is pretty good too, and you can customize it quite well using the Keys Cafe app from Good Luck. In here, you can click on the style your own keyboard, and there's themes that you can choose from. But my favorite thing is the effects. After enabling this, Every time you tap on a key, there will be like a light that kind of ripples out from it. It kind of looks like a mechanical keyboard and I think it looks really cool. All right, and for the lock screen. So if you go into the lock screen settings, you can change up the clock style. Here, you can also set the lock screen widgets, which show up when you tap on the clock on the lock screen, and these are all the options. The always on display on this phone is probably not seen that often. For me, when it's just sitting on my desk, it's usually closed, but still, I like to customize the always on display a little bit. I change it to show always instead of tap to show. And also for the clock style, these are all the options. but you can also change the brightness of the always on display if you toggle off the auto brightness. And I like setting it to the maximum so that the time is easier to see. There's also this thing called flex mode for the Z Flip when it's bent to the 90 degree angle. So here you can see some apps do provide a custom layout. For example, the camera one will move all the settings to the bottom half and then the image to the top half. But for the apps that don't have a custom layout, you can toggle on the flex mode panel for it. And that way, whenever you bend the phone to 90 degrees, the panel will pop up and you can see your quick settings. Also take a screenshot, change up the brightness and the volume and use this little touchpad, which I find pretty finicky to use. I honestly don't really think the flex mode panel is all that useful, but also I rarely use the phone in this 90 degree configuration. Most of the time it's just either fully opened or fully folded. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to check out my Z Flip 4 review, which I'll link right here. Please give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. Here are the rest of my social media platforms so you can follow me on those if you would like to. And yeah, I hope to see you soon. Bye!